board will rely on the fact that the uh, staff of material for 813. It's a memorandum, a joint memorandum from Supervisor Rush and myself. It spells out some of the reasons for uh, the request to eliminate or disband the Clear Lake Advisory Committee. Some of those reasons uh, that are incorporated in here is reference to uh, the delay and the provision and quarterly reports to the board. Uh, some complaints and recent emails of concerns about Brown Act violations. Some concerns that uh, and inconsistencies from members of CLAC where there was discussion uh, that there may have been consensus building uh, without a quorum uh, which could lead to possible Brown Act violations through uh, serial uh, communications. Um, in addition, um, this memo touches upon uh, the idea or concept of maybe establishing a, a different committee that might better serve the board uh, that will be comprised of people with greater uh, science backgrounds and technical expertise. I, I look at the, the history of the, the Resource Management Committee and then having class as a Clear Lake Advisory Subcommittee and that uh, metamorphosis or evolution that has taken place over time. And I, and I think we've really gotten away from what my understanding and the importance of the Resource Committee was, which was too big and, and wieldy and, and at times hard to establish a quorum. And then we come more and more reliant on class, which evolved and changed their name to CLAC. And I, I, I believe in, in really grappling with watershed issues and looking at a holistic system of the Clear Lake Cache Creek watershed and, and the lake that it, it might make sense to uh, revisit the Resource Management Committee of uh, public agency uh, interests and stakeholders and also bringing in uh, people with technical expertise, uh, science uh, backgrounds, uh, land use backgrounds. Um, in order to effectively guide us and assist us in, in navigating the decisions that we make pertaining to Clear Lake and its watershed. Um, one of the things that has troubled me with this committee, and I'm not singling out any individuals, just collectively speaking, uh, is that at times uh, I feel that personal agendas have trumped uh, the mission of CLAC and what I know CLAC to be in terms of being advisory to the, the, the Board of Supervisors help guide us in making policy decisions and working with us and not against us. Uh, there comes a point to where uh, it, it is moved into a state of dysfunction, in my opinion. Uh, it concerns me uh, when individual uh, CLAC members come to me and talk about the dysfunction. It concerns me when our own staff uh, has been put in adversarial positions because of personalities or personality conflicts. Um, and probably, it, and it doesn't really it's not incorporating this memorandum, but what was most troubling for me is we had CLAC as, an, as a group, both individually and collectively, advocate for the lake, zebra quagga mussels uh, as being one of the most uh, grave issues and important issues, uh, potentially threatening our water bodies here in Clear Lake. And when the board had taken action last year and recently going through the exercise of trying to secure revenue stream, such as a sales tax, CLAC was completely absent. Uh, the first uh, go around with Measure E, uh, bringing another sales tax proposal. I believe it was Supervisor Rushing specifically wanted CLAC to be engaged in that process. Uh, we brought it back to provide ample opportunity and time for serious input, serious recommendations, and policy recommendations. But we've received nothing but a lack of cooperation, a lack of quorum no written recommendations that I recall, uh, no solid input from a collective body that should be engaged uh, in helping guide us uh, with a measure such as a sales tax measure that secure revenues to help protect us from the invasive species, to help us manage uh, the watershed, to invest in wetlands, to go after and abate aquatic weeds and find ways to abate algae. Uh, to me, it, um, it's disheartening. I, I don't understand if that group collectively truly loves the lake and the importance of uh, our watersheds and restoring our watershed and investing in our ecosystem, 
why they wouldn't be more engaged in both efforts in terms of the sales tax and trying to secure revenue so they could steer it in a direction uh, that uh, that would at least have a uh, majority of five members supporting, and they couldn't build that consensus on either effort. Uh, to me, that's very troubling, and uh, it goes to the heart of why this memorandum and, and the request, from my perspective, is before this body, is that uh, this uh, body, uh, and this time has come to no longer uh, be intact, uh, in my opinion. Uh, with that being said, I, I do appreciate uh, everybody's uh, volunteering on the committee. It's a, it's a thankless job. It's uh, not compensated. and. and have respect for people at least uh, showing up for those individuals that do show up, uh, providing input and, and, and having concerns about uh, the lake and the interest in trying to buy. Uh, I, I do wholeheartedly believe that uh, that we can do better and that the uh, board can create a committee uh, that will better serve us and inviting us with the technical expertise that we need staff to uh, better serve and, and better manage their late hours. That's my initial opening remarks. I observe uh, to uh, other comment of the board. And, uh, uh, thank you. And uh, I will just I have to add today that you know how hard uh, members, maybe some of the members have worked, and I do appreciate that work. Um, I also have reflected on what the board really needs in way of advisory advice on around the lake. And one of the, we need we have two major needs. One is we do need that technical. Um, input, but we also need connection with agencies and uh, other entities that have responsibility. So uh, those two things uh, we really need to consider as we bring this item back and how we form, either reform the RMC or form the RMC with, with some uh, technical advisory committee. Supervisors? And yes, you know, I, this that is me to see that we're kind of going down this path and I can understand and a lot of reasons why. Um, and I, I really think um, it's partly because we didn't keep up the RMC committee. The RMC committee was real key to the way things happen and the, the people, and actually probably a lot of the people that are on the clack don't even know, um, well, probably never even went to an RMC committee because of the committee meeting that hasn't happened in a couple of years. Maybe four and, or five months. And that, that committee just met once a quarter and it was um, UC Davis, Fish and Game, EPA, um, you know, the, our departments, it was just a number of departments that had a vested interest in Clear Lake and their surrounding areas. It was, it was great to get quarterly information on what was going, with the, going on with the Mercury Mine site, um, you know, with Fish and Game, and um, it was just a, a good way to get together and talk about things, keep things going and lively. And then the, the class committee was the uh, the committee that kind of carried things through on the other couple of months that uh, kind of did research and brought things back to the RMC committee. That's why it was the Clear Lake Advisory Subcommittee of the RMC committee. And um, it functioned at one point really, really well. I think, well, um, Melissa and I are the only two in this room that probably on it 15, 16 years ago, as far as the RMC and the Clear Lake Advisory Subcommittee. So, you know, it really had a great function back then, and it was, it, it seems like it really strived and made a big difference. And I just, like I said, it saddens me to see that it's, it's uh, going to go by the wayside, and the only way we can, um, you know, maybe come up with something that's, that's going to work better because, you know, we've uh, scheduled a couple of times last year for the quarterly reports, and um, I think we got our, our second quarter report in the first part of the, the fourth quarter or something. I don't even know. Now I've lost track of it. But anyway, that's all I have to say right now. Open it to the public. Well, it's helpful to hear more of the background on the committee and where it came out of. I'm, I'm Be sure I'm to state your name, Chloe. Chloe Carl. Thanks. And I'm testifying as, as a citizen of uh, Lake Board. And um, I also have been doing a radio show called The Water Hour 
with the um, director um, of CLAC, Sarah Ryan, and she couldn't be here today. Today is a religious holiday for her. Um, so I was I was informed of, of the um, letter to disband, and reading it, I was really disheartened and kind of shocked. And again, I'm a member of the community, um, not really knowing about the background or about where where this is going. I just felt like it would have been um, more honorable to have um, brought in at least the leadership of CLAC to um, discuss where this is going, you know, and, and maybe there, certainly there are problems. I applied to be on the um, committee sometime back in the spring, but I received um, a paycheck from the county, so I was eliminated from that. But um, I, I, I'm really interested in and have been learning more about the lake in terms of our um, radio show and during the water monitoring that's going on. And, and I want to be able to share that. Um, and I feel that Sarah is extremely knowledgeable and I hope that she'll be included in anything that continues uh, since, of course, she also speaks for the tribe. Um, so I, I've modified my letter to you, um, Tony, and, and to um, Denise, and, and that I understand where you're coming from and what you want. It's more about the process of how you go about disbanding. I served for four years on an advisory committee, and it was not easy. I was, I was in the leadership for a couple of years, and there, there's a lot of contention. I would like to think that somehow that we could facilitate this within the, you know, within your authority as the board when there's an advisory committee that does not, um, you know, respond the way you, you expect and want. And certainly you have this authority, but wouldn't it be well, sta well to state it to the group more directly? And so that's all I ask for today is just to consider that um, you know you, you might take this matter to the existing committee who have served so well and I'm sorry to hear that reports were late um, from the committee or that they ignored you know that's very important considerations but why not confront maybe you have um, I did not know confront the committee directly it just sets a better example to citizens like myself out here that want to serve on committees for the county. And yes, it isn't always easy to get personalities to work out. And um, may, may whatever happens um, continue to work on behalf of the lake. And I know that I'll be there and be interested. So thank you for listening. Melissa Fulton speaking as vice chair of CLAC and on behalf of Sarah, who, as you heard, cannot be here today. Um, she sent me an email uh, just prior to leaving the office uh, to come to the meeting, which I am reading on her behalf. Um, as the newly as the newly re-elected chair of CLAC, I urge the board to consider the following. CLAC had no trouble meeting its quorum this last year. The difficulties finalizing quarterly reports have been due to some members insisting on focusing on specific issues such as the relationship of DWR and CLAC, thereby eating up our time. Some members were, are very frustrated with um, the Department of Water Resources not sharing the full amount of information necessary for us to operate efficiently. Uh, two, CLAC has operated in good faith for the board, attempting to meet all our obligations with members putting in many hours to digest the information needed to provide the board advice on the lake. Three, some of the members of the board are environmental scientists. If you wish to have more and eliminate the citizens on the committee, please ask the scientists to fill up the empty seats of CLAC first. Four, I cannot think of a single instance that CLAC is overstepping its bounds to become more autonomous 
as you state. Uh, several county documents have, that have been submitted to the state identifying CLAC as a committee that needs to review documents or provide public input, um, such as the Clear Lake Integrated Aquatic Plant Management Plan. Uh, finally, I'm sorry I cannot be at today's meeting to address any additional issues that are brought up, but I was not informed that this item was going to be put on the agenda until it was already confirmed. Sincerely, uh, Sarah Ryan. And I made copies of this for the uh, report. Players are involved in all these things over and over, same members of the public. And if you have to bring a facilitator in so that you can agree upon a process to get through a plan, that's pretty serious. The same thing is happening with CLAC. One of the, one of the things that we don't have are any um, guiding principles as far as what you can and cannot do. What are the ground rules? And we've had trouble with people staying on track. There was a tendency to get disorganized. I was I was the past chair of this committee. And it was like herding cats all the time. It was a tough job. And that's why I'm no longer involved. I did not have the time to do this. I think that from my perspective, and in talking with the tribe, some of my chairs have been here at some of these committee meetings. There have been times when we've been terribly effective, and then there's been other times when we've been really ineffective. It depends upon the makeup of the committee. I would agree with Supervisor Farrington, there are personal agendas going on. There are personality conflicts going on. There's all this stuff, and that's, that's normal in politics. It's normal in groups, but what isn't normal is when you cannot produce a product, when you are bringing in facilitators to help you through plans, because the same people over and over are creating the same problems and can't agree upon a process and do not respect each other enough to let those things go by for the good of the whole. So I would support what Supervisor Farrington and Supervisor Russian have said. I found my time there to be equally frustrating as well as probably a good experience overall because we do need to be concerned about the lake. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Melissa Fulton speaking as a member of CLAC for myself. Um, I too have been chair of this organization. I served a two-year term. Um, and um, everything that Paula said uh, is true. Uh, when I'm volunteering my time and taking time away from my paying job, to come to a committee which I feel has a tremendous amount of value. <clears throat> and I find my stomach tying up in knots because I know I'm going into a three-hour meeting and I'm going to be facing an adversarial position, uh, put in an adversarial position by a couple of members of that committee on a continuing basis. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it because I don't feel that my time is being utilized to the full benefit that I want it to be utilized. Um, like everyone else on the committee, even those who put us in, 
this position. Uh, we all love the lake, and we're there because we love the lake. However, I think um, for us to be, be effective, um, we need to take a look at the makeup of the committee. And um, I would also echo, um, is it Chloe? Chloe, I'm sorry. Chloe's uh, comment. I think that prior to taking any action on this, as stated on the agenda, I would like to see uh, Supervisors Farrington and Rushing, if you would be so kind, to sit down with the leadership of Platt or the committee as a whole, and let's have a discussion about this. Um, there are people who seem to think that they, on the committee, who seem to think that they can run DWR better than the people who are paid to do it. Uh, and they also think that we need to come to you as a committee and tell you to tell them how to run their job. Um, I personally don't advocate that for an advisory committee. I don't uh, believe in that. Um, the RMC, uh, unfortunately, I have to put that in the lap of the five of you sitting up there. Um, yes, it was a good committee. Um, however, it hasn't met in several years. And I think part of the reason for that is budgets have changed throughout all segments and sectors of government. And so the people who were representing a lot of those agencies, <clears throat> I think they had to step back through uh, direction from their supervisors. I don't know that for a fact, but that's part of my feeling. Um, I think also something that might have helped us, uh, us being CLAC, avoid coming to this point um, would, be, um, would be the presence of a member of the Board of Supervisors, not at every meeting, but from time to time. I remember when Jeff used to come, and um, those meetings were very productive, they were beneficial, um, and I think that that's, that's been a missing uh, quotient, if you will. Um, I would hate to see CLAC eliminated. I think it can be reinvented, if you will, but I also personally feel that there are, um, there are members of CLAC who, for whatever reason, um, may not wish to see it succeed. And those are harsh words, but it's my personal feeling. So um, I'm more than willing to volunteer, and my board of directors is willing to have me volunteer for these types of committees because they see the benefit. But um, something's got to change. Uh, we've got work to do, all of us, and we can't be sitting there for three hours every month um, listening to some of the things we listen to and uh, being put through that sort of environment to no good result. So thank you for your consideration of my comments and any questions you have I'll be willing to address. Hi, I'm Suzanne Lyons. I'm a citizen of Lakeport and, uh, and Lake County and a former member of CLAC, or CLASS as we were at, at that particular time. Um, one of the things that I think is problematic about disbanding this committee at this particular time is right now um, the county is uh, using the um, weed management uh, document as part of uh, your compliance with the stormwater uh, permit. And in that document, CLAC is referred to, or CLASS, either way, um, a number of times as being um, actions that, uh, that the entity is taking towards uh, satisfying that permit. And if you 
get rid of CLAC, you're going to have to, one of the things that's going to happen is a lot of these things are going to have to be taken out of that report because it's no longer, they're no longer uh, valid. Um, I agree with Jeff. I think Jeff Smith has really hit on the head one of the things that is the problem. And it wasn't until I read that weed management, uh, uh, aquatic weed management plan that I went bingo as a former member of class that one of the dysfunctions is that there's supposed to be a technical advisory committee. The technical advisory committee is supposed to be scientifically based and they are supposed to do the wrangling that ends up coming to you from class. Class is supposed to be the public group that takes that information that comes from that technical group of scientists and is able to look at it and say, okay, this is what the consensus that we have on the information that we've been given. Unfortunately, class has been given the job of doing that technical work that they don't know how to do. And I think a lot of the wrangling would stop if, rather than getting rid of class, the actual te technical group was revitalized. I think that would really be a help. And, it, and I think it would be a solution to a lot of the dissension. One of the things in the words of the, uh, uh, of the aquatic plant management plan says that um, the uh, technical issues, including the pros and cons relevant to the issues and courses of action identified by the Citizens Advisory Committee, this information can be presented to the community for discussion and approval through the public process, and the experts can debate the technical issues and avoid making policy. I think that that's something that maybe the board really should be looking at. Um, I think it would be a shame to throw the baby out with the bath. It took a year and a half of, a lot. in fact, a lot of the people who were really good key players on the CLAC um, committee just finally gave up and walked away trying to hammer out these bylaws. It took forever. To look at starting up another committee and having to go through that, that's asking for a lot. Um, some of that awful uh, uh, housekeeping has been done, and I think it's a shame not to take advantage of that and move forward and do the really important things that this committee should be doing. Um. Anita, I'm wondering if you can comment on the, um, I had asked a while back for you to take a look at the, uh, the stormwater the storm issue. With the yeah, I did go through this with, with both Scott and Will Evans in Community Development. He sent me the documents. And on page 30 of the final order, there is a public involvement and participation program requirement that requires the permit even within the second year of the effective date of the permit to involve the public in the development and implementation of activities related to the program. The public involvement and participation program is required to encourage volunteerism, public comment, and input on policy and activism in the community. The permit also requires certain minimum implementation levels, which includes the requirement that permit to develop a public involvement and participation strategy that establishes who is responsible for specific tasks and goals. Also, the permittee must consider development of a citizen advisory committee, either a standalone group or utilize an existing group. As stated in the permit, the permittee may invite the citizen advisory group to participate in the development and implementation of all parts of the community's stormwater program. There's no requirement that the Watershed Protection District use an advisory group. This is one way that the public participation requirement can be effectuated. So essentially, the, the authority that any advisory group has extends only as far as your board determines to extend it. They're not autonomous. They have no independent authority. And a state agency can't best that in them. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Betsy Gone. I remember my first RMC meeting back in 2003, or might be 2002. Um, I learned a huge amount. And in class was actually a very functional portion of that. I remember the first CLAC meeting, or class meeting I went to in 2004, where the uh, Clear Lake Integrated Aquatic Plant Management Plan was uh, reaching culmination uh, based upon the diverse members, including the Remlanders. I think George Speak was the chair at that time. 
uh, you know, there, there were certainly people like Ed, uh, you know, argued furiously over the uh, mechanical harvesting. But these things are really important to hammer out. And one of the really great things about that 2004 plan, the Aquatic Plant Management Plan, is that it calls for all sorts of, of uh, paying attention to how things are working and gathering data and analysis and, and, and evaluating, you know, the effectiveness of treatment uh, programs and so forth with the participation of the Clear Lake Advisory Subcommittee, uh, the Technical Advisory Group, and so forth. Um, I would actually love to see that plan implemented. I, I think it did a magnificent job. I, I was so impressed. I had no idea really who put it together, but uh, it was, you know, I came in just at the end when it was getting approved, and uh, I, I was actually very delighted uh, to see what it called for. Because at all times, it reminds uh, people that things change, conditions change, you need to have adaptive management uh, practices in your po in your process, and uh, and you want to constantly be careful about maintaining the balance. And I remember when I first had a chat with Mr. Uh, uh, Delian about this. He said, "Well, yeah, it's very important to maintain this balance." But I think from the public's perspective, and I do uh, provide public education and outreach for the stormwater permit, the public's perspective is that the input to your board and the input to the to the um, agencies at this time is minimized from the public's perspective because the agencies are scrambling so hard to keep up with their own obligations. And you hear uh, wastewater treatment, waste discharge requirements, and so forth. The Aquatic Plant Management Plan addresses uh, pollution prevention, which is not the same permit as the stormwater uh, permit, the NPDES permit, but it's the same non-point source pollution National Clean Water Act program. And so those facts uh, tie together the need for you guys to give support to, uh, I think the RMC really needs to be recharged. We really need the input from the federal agencies to meet the stormwater permit now because our lake is taking in, the majority of the load comes from federal lands, we can't stop it. So these are all really complicated but very important issues and I think you need to recognize the public does care and participating in this is really a, a tough job, but I've been the secretary now for I've been the fourth year now, and I'm really appreciative of the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Anyone else? Phil Murphy. Several years ago, I had the uh, unpleasant experience of attending a CLAC meeting which uh, to me seemed like some sort of group therapy session for uh, a mental health uh, outpatient group or something. Uh, there is, uh, well, a feeling that I, I would never want to re-experience that. Uh, but that kind of uh, goes to the core of, of my, uh, my concern, which is that uh, all these problems you're talking about with class or CLAG have been around for at least half a decade. They've been glaringly obvious. And the board has not exercised the level of oversight it needs to make that body functional. It's, it's just kicked the can down the road. It's tried to ignore the problems. And then uh, probably to, to make things worse, on the rare occasions the CLAC has come up with some sort of useful information or suggestions that have been ignored. And I think Tony said something that uh, kind of highlighted why that's the case because they would come up with a, a suggestion that uh, wasn't something the board wanted to hear, like the tax measures. You know, they weren't on board with them to the way, in the way the board wanted to, you know, basically wanted to get some backup or a rubber stamp for what they had already decided to do. So they were just blown off. You know, I don't care how you guys arrive at the decisions you make regarding the lake. I don't care what, what system you use. I expect two things to be done. 
the decisions to be made in a timely fashion, which they have not been, the fact that another lake in Southern California has just been infested with quagga in the last two weeks, we found this out. It's a, a lake that has a lot of bass fishing, a lot of wakeboarding, so it means that it's something we really have to take seriously. But we've had five years to put together some kind of reasonable plan. And this is a lake, mind you, that has very strict controls over its access. Every single boat that goes in that lake is inspected. So that should give you an idea of, even when you're doing things right, that's a very difficult problem to deal with. And here we are five years down the road, and the only thing we've got on the horizon is another tax measure, which I guarantee you is going to fail. And I don't see that you've got any plan B going for that. So, you know, you've, you've got to do things quicker. You've got to take care of these problems at the early stage rather than just letting them fester for years and years. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of examples I could use, um, like uh, with, with the algae thing. You know, we were using techniques until just recently, in fact, maybe we're still considering using them, that people like uh, Harry Lyons a decade ago was saying in public were counterproductive. So you guys need to pay attention when people that really know what they're talking about give you good, solid advice. Because for years and years we kept doing things that, you know, the experts said wouldn't work. So, you know, you, you can you can blame all the personality disorders that exist and all their, you know, infighting and, and dysfunctionalism on them all you want. But the bottom line is you're responsible for clack. You guys let it turn into the tester that it is. And I don't really see that you're on track to fix it. Uh, if you're just if you're just listening to staff, people on your payroll who are going to you what you want to hear, even though they have different feelings than else, and else to be the case on important you know issues, um, you're not getting anywhere. So you know, look yourself first before you uh, you know start pointing the big finger of blame and clack, and, and get your own house in order. Basically, spend the time and the effort to do your jobs. I mean, I listened to your calendar this morning. I heard what your schedules were. Until you guys can start accounting for 40 hours of work every week, I'm not, uh, I'm not convinced you're doing what we pay you 1,200 bucks a week plus to be working on. So, you know, and, and I'll tell you another good example is you got the better part of a million dollars to spend on an elevator, but you got nothing to spend on ramp controls, which you could probably get for the cost of that elevator, or 400000 for a skateboard park. I mean, I understand these are other, these other things are important too, but priority-wise, really, are those kind of things more important than keeping Quag out of the lake, or at least making an effort, a reasonable effort to do it? Because I haven't seen that so far. Stickers and signs ain't cutting it. And neither is this tax measure that I guarantee you won't get the votes it got last time. So get it together quick, whatever you do. I had a question of Phil. Phil, when did the uh, CLAC take a position on the measure E? When? Yeah. I don't know. You said they did. They had an adverse position on the tax measure. So do you know the well, data? Well, you just no. So I am responding to the statement that you made that they weren't supportive in the way that. that you wanted no, them to be. No, that's not true. I, I, you can go back and listen to the audio. I was talking about providing input, being engaged, and recommendations on the ordinance. I never used the word support. We wanted recommendations. And they didn't take an official position. That's part of the frustration. So you're making oh, misstatements okay. here. Okay, well, then, then again, Tony, it goes right back to, right. you know, if you, if you want to okay. set up a, a rubber stamp. I want to put quarters in you, but the reality is the buck stops with us, and that's why this item's before us, because it's time to clean the slate and start anew. So yeah, and right. what have you done to stop the sediment load or the quagga issue, Tony? Uh, I'm you have not addressed either of those Phil, problems. Not on the agenda. Phil. 
can fill out an application. Bill, that's not on the agenda, but what I would like to say is that at, we are where we are. It's time to go forward, and that's why this is on the agenda. All right, and, and that is why I'm pointing out to you that what you're proposing to do here is basically get a bunch of people who aren't going to speak to you honestly about some of these issues because they're more concerned about their job than solving the problem, which I understand that, but you seem to be wanting to cut the public out of the loop because they don't always agree with you on certain issues. That's the impression I'm getting here. <laughs> that proposal's not here, but I'm, well, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I think I'm, I'm, I'm hearing some signs of that this morning. John Moss, I believe this clock committee has given some responsible reports. I commend Melissa Fulton. She's a wonderful facilitator. I've seen her in other committees. I do see a widening gulf between the uh, Board of Supervisors and we who come here week after week and give our suggestions. I would like you to consider the committee and its work. Um, people on the committee have different viewpoints. And um, I think the reports have been responsible. They're not what all of you agree with. And I remember hearing one of you say, well, I don't agree with this report. Let's get a new committee. I think that it, what you need to say is, where did you get your facts that uh, go into this report? And especially, uh, Ms. Khan, who works and works and works. And she knows things that none of us know. We need to pool our, our information, exchange the facts, and work together. Instead of eliminating a committee that uh, people on the board are, are a little bit hostile towards people on the Board of Supervisors, some of you are hostile towards it, what the report says. For my information, what they've promoted is monitoring. And I can't see anything wrong with the idea of monitoring. And I would implore you to try to make what is already formed work. Thank you. When you create a committee of lay people um, to advise you, you need to give them <clears throat> some training and some guidelines and some support, and they need to know what's expected of them. And if they don't, um, and you know, you may you may tell them that when the committee's first formed, but over time, um, some of that stuff gets gets lost. And so, um, if you don't help them and support them, then then often you have this kind of result. Um, you have a dysfunctional kind of committee. Um, I know from being on the school board that, that citizens committees aren't always fun to work with for, for, for a board like this. And, and, um, and yet the, the component of, of, um, of citizen input um, in your decisions is, it, in addition to the expert input, it's very important and, and if you continue to eliminate the, the link between this board and the public, um, I think you're eliminating something very important. Um, if nothing else, just in the perception of the people that you're, that you're paying attention to, to what citizens care about and what the citizens want. Well, of course, it's important to have scientific data to make your decisions based on, but it's also important to have the people uh, tell you how they feel, and um, rather than just wholesale uh, terminate this committee, um, it, it might make sense to try to reform it and help them be more functional. Thanks. Uh, 
uh, Jim Steele, I, uh, I don't want to comment directly on whether or not you should uh, ban it or, uh, or move on with CLAC, but I did want to make a point. Uh, I used to be on uh, in the resource area and, and worked for government and was a compensated person who traveled around the state to provide advice on specific issues. And, uh, and so uh, sometimes it would be with other compensated people and sometimes with the citizens group that were not compensated for what they were doing. And the transition between talking with one and the other was always tremendous. You had to prepare differently, you had to be more basic, and you had to break it down between two components. One of them was whether or not that group you were talking to was an advisory group from the standpoint of policy or advisory group from the standpoint of a policy development. I'm sorry, policy development, program development. <coughs> so are they developing a program that actually is going to carry something forward or change some policy? And, uh, and you have to be clear about which one of the things you're asking the group to do. And so when I would come from Sacramento or wherever I was to, to be there, I had to know why they wanted me there and what it was I was to advise them about. Usually it was science. It was actually always about science. Uh, but whether they needed a program or whether they needed a policy. Sometimes it was just a policy, but often it was a program. You've had a problem here with a big void with what, how to actually manage, develop and manage programs. What you need to do is actually pretty clear. You've got to have monitoring programs to know what it is you're, you should be doing and whether your policies work and how things are actually changing out there. This is a changing world. This lake is very sensitive. It's hypersensitive. And so it's unstable right now. It has been for a long time. And you need to be very careful about what goes into the lake and actually have data to be able to make decisions. Uh, you have data, but you don't have enough. So secondly, how do you put that program together and not break the bank? And that should be a very high priority. But there's other programs as well, such as this uh, muscle uh, business. There should be a very close liaison with the state on developing their program. They are very lax in developing a program to allow boats to move around the state. They're very concerned about it. I've seen a, a written document from them that is absolutely uh, amazingly void. If you were working, if you had a committee working directly with them, you could say, here's what we need from the standpoint of being a destination for those boats, and then develop your program around that in concert with the state. So there's plenty you can be doing. You need that kind of committee working on it. And you clearly have to have the citizens involved. The, the insights that I hear from CLAT uh, really are quite good. Being a person that, that had to travel to those committees, this is actually, there are some people under who already know what they're doing. So you have to be very concerned about not having the other elements of your program. So that's what I'm going to offer. Anyone else? <laughs> Representative on CLAT as it continues to exist still. Um, there's been an awful lot of quasi accusations made this morning, um, vague references to people on the committee uh, being a problem. Um, I'm going to volunteer that I'm one of the people that's a problem because I have continued to ask CLAT to operate within the rules that. They're supposed to operate within specifically the Brown Act and specifically to stick to items on the agenda. We have had a problem with having discussions about things that had absolutely nothing to do with things that were on the agenda. And then we get to the end of our time and we haven't dealt with the agenda items. This has been an ongoing problem. Another problem which I'm going to point out is uh, we've had discussions for over a year um, with the representative from Water Resources regarding flood control versus the Watershed Protection District. And I've argued rather vociferously that the Watershed Protection District has the capability to do things in the county that flood control didn't have, 
and it wasn't until pretty much my insistence um, I actually went to county council and asked her to go get the legislative letter of intent and was told by her that she couldn't do it for me she could do it for CLAC or she could do it for a department chair or she could do it for the Board of Supervisors. Well, it turns out that she did it for the Board of Supervisors. And the argument that we've been having with the department for a year, turns out that our department rep was wrong. And the Watershed Protection District does have the authority to do things that CLAC has wanted to address in our work plan. And we haven't been able to because we haven't had agreement so, you know, yeah, there's things that have been disruptive and there have been problems. Um, could we have used some guidance and oversight from a member of the Board of Supervisors? You bet we could. Um, as it stands at the moment, I, I'm not going to say one way or another whether I think that you ought to do away with CLAC. Um, but as it has currently been operating this year, we haven't, we haven't addressed our work plan. We haven't given you a report on our work plan. So, you know, you need to make some changes one way or another. You need to make some changes. Thank you. Anyone else? There's several things that I agree with that people have said, but the fact remains. In the last seven and a half years, we we're having to go through all these personality conflicts. CLAC is not just a citizen's board. It's made up of governmental entities, chambers of commerce, and those are standing. We've had trouble in filling the rest of those positions because people lack the expertise that the board had wanted. I remember uh, before I was a governmental person, I was on as a fisheries person. And I had to prove that I had that type of background in order to get on there, which I did. So a lot of these appointments, I think, you know, it isn't just a citizen's group. It was designed for people that had some background experience that wanted to be involved in this as an advisory committee. As, as a governmental entity, you know, we also are charged without, with, with looking out for the good of our, our members. And I think that's a, it's, it's not just a citizen's group. And it was devised specifically for the management of Clear Lake with the RMC. So whether CLAC continues in its current form or whether it's reformed, you're still going to have the same players. You're going to have the same problems. I think we should just hire a facilitator for Lake County permanently. I'm not kidding, because every meeting I go to, we run into the same problem over and over. Until people start addressing what their primary concern is and they're, and they're honest about what their objective is, we're going to continue to have these problems. I don't think it will hurt to reform this group, to tell you the truth. Thank you. All right, anyone else? So we'll bring it back to the board. And I, I guess I'd like to start by saying this, um, there's some really good points that have been made, and one of them is the, the role of citizen input. I don't think anybody on this board um, wants to ignore citizen input or cut off ties from citizens. That's not the purpose of this discussion. Um, for my part, I'm interested in different viewpoints, and I'm interested in hearing different viewpoints and having people express different viewpoints. Um, I don't want to uh, form a committee with people that are going to tell me what I already know or, or want to hear. I want. Uh, I want to hear from the public. Um, but it seems like we've asked this particular committee to do too much. And when, when we went as a board, when we asked for work plans, and we, you know, it's been a process of trying to interject um, some process into, into, you know, asking for requests from CLAC. We asked specifically for a recommendation on how we could raise money. We asked specifically for recommendation if we come up with a tax measure, what should it be? What should be in it? And we can't, it, it, I think we're asking too much from this particular committee. I think we're asking it to be um, a citizen advisory group, we're asking it to be a technical advisory group, and we're asking it to be a policy uh, group that works government to government. And by doing all of those things, we're getting none of it. It's just too much. So um, my conclusion, my personal conclusion has been, it's the process. It comes back to this board. This board has to act and say, we need to do something different. We need to, we need to 
be very clear about what we want to need. And in order to do that, we, my solution was to wipe the slate clean and look at it fresh and see what's worked in the past. Uh, we had a, a good era with RMC. If we could get those parties back to the table and have a citizen advisory group that, that you know, advises RMC, maybe that's the way to go again. I don't know. But there are those three or four functions. One is the citizen's advisory function. One is the technical advisory function, which also might be the government-to-government -government, uh, function as well, because it seems like the entities that put some money into technical uh, work happen to be the governments, the, the tribes and the, uh, the federal agencies and whatnot. So that's my two cents. I, I think we need to, we definitely as a board need to act though and, and come up with something that will allow uh, the advice to flow that, that is actionable for us. So. Anyone else? I'm tired. Wait a little bit. Yeah. Rob. I actually, you know, as, um, as uh, uh, drastic as this might seem, I think this is the, the only fix. And, and I think it's a good fix. I, you know, wondered how long it would take till this happened. Um, and um, it, it just, you know, I agree with Phil, there has to be some training, but it's too late to train this. You can't, I think if we, when we start over, we need to have, have that training available. But the fact that we have dozens and dozens of other committees that with, with incredibly diverse membership on them that actually function and function well is indicative of the fact that it is there is an ability to do it right, and it's way past that point with this committee. At this point, um, you know, I, I can't help but notice that you know this letter sent by the leadership is you know blaming everybody but that. You know, it's, I, I don't I don't believe for a moment that staff is withholding information or whatever you know these accusations that are made. Um, you know, we have, and no one will convince me that, uh, you know, some members of the committee weren't actually um, um, instrumental in in trying to disrupt things that, you know, they could have gone through a different process as far as the hitch uh, um, issue that we have right now. So, you know, there are personal agendas involved with this committee at this point, and I think the only uh, solution is to wipe it clean and start all over and, uh, be committed, you know, part part of the success of some of the, almost all the committees that we have is there is board involvement, and I think there should be board involvement in this as well. That has been part of the problem. Staff's asked for that, committee members have asked for that, and the board could uh, easily provide uh, leadership on that, and I think they should. I so, um, but I think we should, we should move forward with the recommendation and uh, start, start clean. Any other members? Well, then I'll entertain a motion. Or not. What is the motion? Or not. Well, at, this point, the, um, at this point, the only thing on the agenda is the consideration of the elimination of the following standing committee, but I would propose also that we um, uh, follow up with another agenda item on uh, forming a committee, the kinds of uh, structure that we need in order to get advice on the lake. That won't happen today, but to what, if I may, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, what happened to the RMC committee? Did we disband? We disbanded that? because they were lacking a quorum for so many times. We, I think it requires. Um, I personally think it requires outreach on, on the elected officials' parts to make to to get the people onto that committee that are going to actually show up. Well, I, I know at one point it was the. The chair and vice chair of the board of supervisors sat on the committee as chair and vice chair of the RMC committee. Yeah, if we if we did that again, we might be able to get the people at the t to the table. And and I think that's um, I think that's probably key to this whole thing is to reactivate the RMC committee with the the people that were spelled out to attend, which were you know a lot of the government officials from different. And I think something that somebody mentioned with the budget cut bats backs. I know fish and game. Uh, couldn't be there on Fridays anymore, and it was always on a standing Friday, and they furloughed the Fridays at one point, and those type of things. So, um, I don't know where all that stands now, but it, you know, it's ridiculous that, for one thing, we haven't heard from um, the EPA for ages on what's going on in Sulphur Bay and Mercury Mine. 
and that's how that connection really kept together. So I think we ought to at least re-agendize that and see where the RMC um, should be if it really was disbanded or if it was just in stasis. You know, I don't really remember for sure exactly what happened to it. I think it was disbanded. Well, it, it was officially, but I don't remember all the details of it. But I do remember that it was actually done. We can re-agendize and put you know, put it back on the agenda to reconstitute it. Well, to look at to look at it or something real close to it. it. And also I would include, based on the input today, that we, we need to reaffirm that we want a Citizens Advisory Committee as part of Citizens Advisory or a Citizens Advisory Committee as well. We don't, uh, it, the intent of this is to not cut off the citizen's voice re regarding the lake. Okay. One of the things your board may wish to consider is how you want to envision kind of if you want to your board to be the umbrella agency or if you want RMC or some comparable newly constituted entity to be the umbrella and, and then develop a citizen advisory with, with certain goals and scope of function and technical advisory and if you also wish a policy advisory but to have all of the spokes of the wheel connected the structure is the problem, and I, that's the main message I want to deliver today. The structure, the reason why folks are fighting and, and struggling so much is that the structure is unclear, it's not working, and uh, it's our job to fix it, so we're going to try to fix it. So I, I agree, I need to thank you for that. Um, so that will be an agenda item, we'll put that on the agenda maybe early next month or late this month. And, you know, through the RMC, even though there was a lot of technical folks there and everything else, there's all those meetings can be attended by anybody from the public, and they do have input at those meetings also. And if I remember right, well, the Clear Lake Advisory Subcommittee came out of the RMC as a subcommittee of the RMC. So, um, I mean, if we would just meet again as the RMC and spin off like you know, like we did in the past, it seemed to work fine that way. Um, yeah. I think when things started going south is when we made it a, not a subcommittee because we didn't have a committee for it to be a subcommittee of anymore. Right. And it report, reported right straight back to the board where somebody did mention before it went um, from the clear subcommittee to the RMC and the RMC reported to the board. So. All right. So, uh, is there... Any other comments? I'll look for a motion. Madam Chair, uh, I move to uh, that the Board of Supervisors eliminate uh, the Clear Lake Advisory Committee. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, and I would ask that we re-agendize re uh, reconstitution of committees to advise on the lake. Thank you. All right. That looks like that concludes our time to our agenda items. We uh, our open session items. We now will move into closed session.